So in 917, don't You're on? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hey. Uh, it's Andrew. Hey, Andrew. I should How know are you by hard by now. <laughs> Uh, I want to be one of the name people, but I don't know how to do it. I always record my name, but somehow it's a number. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you about the allegation that objectivists are in a cult. Um, it came up again this week. It's obviously been around as long as Ayn Rand, and she was accused of it many times. And it's just that accusation is common against yep. objectivists. Yep. Um and this last week, Matt Ridley, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to group. sit down with Matt Ridley and talk to him about that. That's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to ask you your perspective on it, because the way I see it is this, that there's three different ways it's made. One is dishonest, because I think that Ayn Rand's and objectivism's intellectual consistency haunts people who you know, need to find a way out of taking the philosophy seriously. Yep, and yep. so they lodge an unfair accusation. And I just see that as dishonest. Secondly, I would, the second way I would say it's made is dishonest. I would say there's two categories of dishonesty. One is maliciously and one is non-maliciously. Like what Matt Ridley did, I didn't see as malicious, but I do think it's dishonest personally. Because I think he should know better. He did, he and, should, but, uh, yeah, I mean, through his exposure to you and just his and general Alex, knowledge. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It's unfair. Yeah. But then there's some people who make it very maliciously, obviously, yeah. and they're being dishonest. And then there, I think that somebody could make the allegation honestly just because they see that it, it, you know, the philosophy is different and it's small and it's fervent. And it has somebody at the head of the, you know, philosophy who we all revere tremendously. And these are all characteristics that a person could probably honestly confuse with kind of a cultish mentality. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think is the proper response and way to counter when that allegation comes up, both in kind of a dishonest and in honest context? Like, how, how would you respond and how would your response change? Well, I mean, I, 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 I think I think your differentiation is right. I, um, and I think that part of the part of the issue is people, and this leads them to this dishonesty, which is uh, the, the the more um, the non malicious one, the more, and, and they're not used to people holding principles and being assertive about the principles, and sticking to those principles consistently, and they associate that with either religion or cult. And if they can't pin it on religion, then they pin it on they, you know, they 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 pin it on a cult. And uh, I mean, my guess is that's what Matt Ridley thinks of it. Although I I don't think Matt actually thought of it. Otherwise, I'm not sure he would have said it. Um, but I, you know, I think the way to combat it is to ask them what they think a cult is. And 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 a cult is they would all say mindless. Uh, uh, followers of uh, dogma uh, by a particular in, and, and I think inherent in objectivism is the answer to that. It, it, it's, it's you know, if it's mindless, it's not part of objectivism. If it's uh, if it's uh, following the group and following commands of a leader, following the the commands of the collective, then it's not objectivism. The anti cult is built into objectivism. Is objectivism now people might treat objectivism as a cult, and I certainly know object people who call themselves objectivists who behave like cult members. But I think it's important to note that as a philosophy and its principles, while it holds certain things as true, the whole methodology of it is anti-cult. The whole methodology of it is, uh, it's about inquiry into what is true and what is not. Not about is what did Ayn Rand say and what she did not. So, uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, there's no basis for it. It's complete nonsense. The only basis for it is that some people that call themselves objectivists behave as if it's a cult. And that's tragic. Can, can you expand on that a little in the sense that there might be some particularly younger objectivists who don't know they're behaving or giving off a certain vibe of, 
you know, being, I mean, so how, how does somebody not cult, off that line? The vibe of a cult is, is, is unthinking, it's dogma, it's quotations, it's uh, constantly quoting rather than using your own language. It's, uh, you know, as soon as somebody disagrees with you, shutting them down because you can't really argue because you don't really know the point because all you can do is shout back a quotation from Ayn Rand. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's things like that. And, and there are various levels of it um, that, uh, that, you know, people express, but it's generally an unconnected defense of Ayn Rand, no matter what, detached from any kind of reality or any kind of knowledge. And uh, that comes across as cultish. Uh, I, I, I think, um, you know, I think everybody dressing the same, although I don't see that among objectivists. I think everybody chanting the same thing. I think anybody, anything that subverts uh, what people consider individualism comes across as cultish. And, and uh, you should be yourself. You should use your own language. You should try to explain. You should use, you should refer to Ayn Rand when relevant, but don't use it as a crutch. Um, be willing to make mistakes, be willing to concede that you make mistakes. Uh, so those are the kind of things that you need to do in order to just live in a way that, that does not promote this notion of it being a cult. Thanks, Andrew. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>